this is your homework from last night. Um, I'm just going to go through each one. That way, if you had questions, hopefully those would get answered. So for this first one, um, the first two reasons are given. And then when you mark your figure, you're marking A, B, and F, E with one mark. Angle A and angle F with one mark. And then in order to mark your definition of midpoint, so C is the midpoint of AF. So the, here's AF right here. Um, it is split into two parts by C. So if you look, you have AC is the first half, and then CF is the second half. So they put AC is congruent to FC, and that's the definition of midpoint. Again, remember that anytime you have a vocab word with the exception of parallel, if you have that word here, the next reason is most likely going to be the definition of that word. And then after this, they tell you your triangles are congruent, and they're congruent because of side, angle, side. For the second proof, um, reason number one should be given. And whenever you have parallel lines, you should know that you're marking angle pairs. So they say that JHL, which is this angle here, is congruent to GLH. And um, GH, sorry, HLJ, so that is this angle here, is congruent to LHG. So that's this angle. And when you mark those, hopefully you're recognizing that those would be alternate interior angles. The next thing they have is HL is congruent to LH. I really don't like how that's written, so um, I'm going to rewrite that for you guys. I should have fixed that, sorry. But that is because the two triangles share that side. So that would be reflexive. And then finally, the two triangles are congruent because of angle side angle. <clears throat> For this next proof, reason number one is given, and you should be marking A, B, and C, B. When we have B, D is perpendicular to A, C, we know that we're drawing in right angles. So if I highlight, here's B, D, here's A, C, and the right angles you can see have just appeared where I've outlined. So here's a right angle and here's a right angle. Again, make sure you're drawing in a square, not just an arc mark. It has to be a square. And we know that those are right angles because that's the definition of perpendicular. Again, notice right here I have perpendicular. The next reason is the definition of that word. Um, the next one says angle ADB is congruent to angle CDB. So now we're saying those two angles are congruent, and that's because all right angles are congruent. So remember, when you have perpendicular, you have to have those two statements and reasons in a row. And then lastly, they say that BD is congruent to BD. That's because it's reflexive. It's a line that both triangles share. And now the two triangles are congruent because of HL. So if you look, we have a right angle. Across from it is the hypotenuse. And then we have one other leg marked. So that is HL. And number four, the first reason is given. When you look HG and KL are parallel, so we're going to give those arrows going the same direction. We also have that HG is congruent to KL, so we can mark tick marks on them as well. Remember, whenever you have parallel lines, you're going to have some kind of an angle pair. So they tell you that H and K are congruent. And if you're having a hard time seeing it, you can always try highlighting. So I have these two that are parallel. And then here's the transversal. And if you're still not seeing it, you could always draw out your lines so that our sketch looks just a little more like what we're familiar with. So here it is. And then hopefully at this point you can see those are alternate interior angles. The next line says HIG, 
So that's this angle is congruent to KIL. And those are vertical angles. And now I have my three marks on each triangle. Remember, we don't count the parallel marks. And if you look, I have two angles in a side and it's angle, angle side. For proof number five, the first reason is given and they've already marked both of those sides parallel. Remember, when we have parallel lines, we're looking for an angle pair. I'm going to start with my single mark sides and then this transversal. If you look, I've now outlined the two angles. So here's the first set. And now I'm going to look at the other lines. So I'm going to use yellow for this set. So here's my two parallels. Here's my transversal. I've now outlined two other angles. It's this angle and this angle. Both those sets are alternate interior angles. <clears throat> I'm going to name them both in the same box. So I'm going to start with my single marked angles. So I'm going to start with this one right here. This angle has G as the vertex, so that has to be the middle letter. So I could name it K G H. <clears throat> and that angle is congruent to this angle down here, which K is the vertex, so that needs to be the middle letter, L, K, G. And then in the same box, I'm also going to put my other set of alternate interior angles. Um, these are the double marked angles. I'm going to start with this one up here. Um, so that would be angle L, G, K is congruent to H, K, G. Next says the reflexive property. So that is the side they both share, which is side G, K. So G, K is congruent to G, K. And then lastly, the triangles are congruent because of angle, side, angle. In proof number six, the first reason is given. When I go through and mark, I mark DC and BA with one mark, and angle C and angle A are right angles. Since C and A are right angles, I know that they're congruent because all right angles are congruent. Next, I have the reflexive line. So DB is congruent to itself because reflexive. And now I've got three sides and or angles marked on each triangle. So I can write that the triangles are congruent. If I look, it's because I have a right angle. This is the hypotenuse. This is a leg. So this would be HL. For proof seven, I would write in my givens and they're putting them all in the same box. So I'm just gonna put all of this in the same box. Sorry, I ran out of room. Um, they already have the parallel marks for you. Um, so we're going to start with that information. So I'm going to start with the single parallel marks. So here and here. And then I'm going to highlight the line that touches both of them. And I have now created this outline of two angles, which is G and then angle LIK. If you're not sure, let me just sketch a picture off to the side here, which is a little more like what we're used to seeing. And hopefully you're recognizing that those are corresponding angles. So the reason for this one is going to be corresponding. If I do this similar thing um, with the double marked sides and I mark the transversal that crosses both of them, you can see that HIG and angle K are also corresponding angles. After that, I haven't used the statement about the midpoint. So I is the midpoint of GK. 
So, down here in the bottom is GK. I is directly in the middle, which means it gets split into these two parts. The first part is GI. The second part is KI. And we know that those have to be congruent because that's the definition of midpoint. After that, we have all the marks we need. So the triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. <clears throat> For our very last proof, the first reason is given. We can mark A, B, and B, and C, B with one mark. And then the next thing we can focus on is this given that has to do with bisecting. So remember, another way to think of it is it's getting cut in half. So BD cuts angle ABC in half. If I just highlight this, here's angle ABC, here's BD, and if you look, I've just highlighted the two angles. So here's the first angle and the second angle. So angle ABD is congruent to angle CBD, and that's the definition of bisect. Again, I've got that vocab word right here. Right below in the reason, I've got the definition of that word. So remember, that pattern pretty much always exists. Next, I can mark BD because the triangles both share that side. We call this reflexive. And then lastly, the two triangles are congruent because I have a side, then an angle, then a side.